Hi, welcome to Math Antics. In our last video, we learned about circles, and we learned about a special ratio called pi. In this video, we're going to learn how we can use that ratio to calculate the circumference and the area of any circle. The formulas that we use to calculate circumference and area are so important that you should really memorize them. To help you do that, we're going to look at them side by side, and that will help you see their similarities and their differences so you don't get them mixed up. The formula for finding the circumference is circumference equals pi times diameter. And just like most formulas, we use abbreviations. C for circumference and D for diameter. So that's a pretty simple formula. It tells us that if we know the diameter of a circle, all we have to do is multiply that diameter times the number pi and we'll get the circumference. And we'll try that formula out in a few minutes. But first, let's see the formula for area. The formula for finding the area of a circle is area equals pi times radius squared. Again, we can use abbreviations to make it shorter. A for area and R for radius. Now this is a pretty simple formula too. It tells us that if we know the radius, we just have to square it and then multiply that times pi to get the area. Okay, but what does it mean to square the radius? Well, squaring a number just means multiplying it by itself. For example, 3 squared just means 3 times 3. And 5 squared just means 5 times 5. And r squared just means r times r. So our formula is really just area equals pi times r times r. But we write it in the r squared form because it's more compact. Oh, and one really important thing to keep in mind is that r squared is not the same thing as 2 times r. That's a common mistake that students make when first learning how to find the area of a circle. And if we look carefully at both of our formulas, you'll see why. These two formulas have a lot in common. In each of them, you're multiplying pi by part of a circle to find either the circumference or the area. In the case of the circumference, you're multiplying pi times the diameter. And in the case of the area, you're multiplying pi times the radius squared. But do you remember the relationship between the radius and the diameter? Diameter is just two times the radius. So we could rewrite our formula for circumference like this. Circumference equals pi times two times r. Ha! <laughs> now you see why it's so easy to get confused. To find the circumference, you take the radius and double it. Then you multiply by pi to get the final answer. But for area, you don't double the radius, you square it. And that's a very important difference. To help you see that difference in action, let's find both the circumference and the area of this circle using our two formulas. The only thing we know about this circle is that the radius is 8 meters. Luckily, that's all we need to know. First, we use our formula for circumference. Circumference equals pi times diameter. To get the diameter, we take the radius and we double it. That is, we multiply it by 2. 2 times 8 equals 16, so the diameter is 16 meters. Then, we multiply that by pi to get the circumference. Since this is decimal multiplication, I'm going to use a calculator. 16 times 3.14 equals 50.24. So that means that the circumference of this circle is 50.24 meters. All right, now let's find the area using our formula, area equals pi times r squared. Again, we start with the radius, but instead of doubling it, we square it. That means we multiply it by itself. 8 meters times 8 meters equals 64 meters squared. Then we multiply that by pi. 64 times 3.14 equals 200.96 meters squared. That's the area of this circle. As you can see, the result we get when we square the radius is very different from the result we get when we double it. And one of the most important differences is with the units of our answer. Doubling the radius just gives us the diameter, which is a one-dimensional quantity. So the answer we get from our formula for circumference is also a one-dimensional quantity. But when we square the radius, that gives us square units, which are two-dimensional. 
That makes sense because area is always a two-dimensional quantity. Remembering that will help you avoid getting these two formulas mixed up. The one that has the radius squared is always for area. All right, let's try a couple real-world examples to make sure you've got it. Here's the real world, which as you probably know is a sphere. But if we take a slice of the world right at the equator, that slice is a circle. Let's find the circumference of that circle. To do that, we need to know the diameter of the Earth. That turns out to be about 12,750 kilometers. Great. Then to find the circumference, we just need to multiply that diameter times pi. Now I'm definitely going to use a calculator for this. And I'm going to use a more accurate version of pi, since this is such a big distance. So 12,750 times 3.14159 equals 40,055 kilometers to the nearest kilometer. Wow, that's a pretty big circumference. No wonder it takes so long to go all the way around the Earth. Your mark, get set, go! Whew. Yes, 3.14 seconds quicker than last time. Yes! Whew. Here's another real world example with a circle. If this pizza has a diameter of 24 inches, what's its total area? Well, using our formula, we start by squaring the radius. But the problem didn't give us a radius, it gave us the diameter. So we have to calculate the radius from the diameter. Fortunately, that's really easy. The radius is just half of the diameter. So we just need to divide the diameter by 2. 24 inches divided by 2 gives us 12 inches for the radius. And now that we know the radius, we need to square it. 12 inches times 12 inches equals 144 inches squared. Next, we just multiply that by pi. 144 times 3.14 is 452.16. So the total area of the pizza is 452.16 square inches. All right, so now you know how to find the circumference and the area of any circle. All you need to do is remember the formulas. Circumference equals pi times diameter, and area equals pi times radius squared. But it's really important to practice using these formulas for yourself. So be sure to try some of the exercise problems. That's the way to really learn math. Thanks for watching Math Antics, and I'll see you next time. Learn more at mathantics.com.